ES6 presented us with a new operator, the spread operator, which is represented by three dots. I have found this new operator very useful in certain situations, and in this tutorial, we are going to take a look at it. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. The spread operator can be difficult to define, but basically it lets you spread or expand an array. Technically, it works on any iterable, but I found the most applications with arrays, and so that's what we're going to be looking at. Let's get right into examples because that is really the best way to understand this operator. Okay, I have here an array, and it consists names of students. Now let's say I'm creating a second array and I have some student names in this array as well. Like this. But I also want to add the elements of the student one array to this array. How could I do that? Well, let's try putting the array right here. What's going to happen with this? Well, let's go ahead and save that. Refresh, open our console, and let's take a look at student two. And as we can see, the array was embedded as one of the elements in this student two array. So we have two names and then we have an array. If we open this up, we can see the array inside there with those names. And so it really didn't add the elements. What it did instead is it inserted the array as one of the elements of this array. Now, the spread operator can help us solve this problem. So I can simply use the spread operator before this array, like that, three dots. Save that. Now let's see what happens. Now you can see that each of the elements of that array are a part of the student to array. So instead of the array just being inserted, it expanded or spread out the array. And then those individual elements were inserted. That example, I think, illustrates really well what the spread operator can do for you. But there are multiple applications of this operator, so we want to look at more. Now, the next example I've used to solve a problem when I've had an array of scores, and I've been trying to find out what the highest score value is. So let me paste in another array here. Here we have an array of scores, and just assume that we want to find the largest value or the largest score in this array. Well, one way to do that would be to use a loop cycle through the array, in the process of cycling through that array, determine which is the highest. But the math object has a nice little method, the max method that returns the largest number from a set of numbers. And so why couldn't we just use that? Let's see what happens when we do console.log math.max now, if I had a list of numbers inside of that, it would return the largest number. But let's go ahead and put this scores array inside there and see what we get. Refresh, we get an end, not a number. So basically, the array is considered not a number. Well, what if we were to expand that or spread it out using the spread operator? Then it should work for us, right? So save that. Refresh, sure enough, 97 is the highest number. So a much simpler way to find the largest number in an array. That's an example I've used to solve problems similar to this. Now, the next example of the spread operator I really love. I learned this particular application from Brandon Morelli from one of his great JavaScript articles, which he publishes on Medium. So, for this example, let's say you have an array that you want to copy. How would you go about doing that? Well, let's go ahead and set up a simple array here. I'm going to call it ARR1. 
we'll just set it equal to three elements, one, two, and three. Now, if we try to assign this array to another variable, what happens? You may have run into this before with JavaScript. I'm going to log to the console the second variable, ARR2. So let's go ahead and save that. And we refresh. OK, it looks like it copied it just fine. It has the 1, 2, and the 3. This is the ARR2 array. And it looks like it is doing exactly what we want. But notice what happens here if we make a change to ARR1 after we've already assigned it to ARR2. And then let's go ahead and log to the console again, that array. Notice that the ARR2 array reflects the same thing as AR1 after we've changed it. So what has happened here? Well, with JavaScript, objects are assigned by reference, not by value. Therefore, when I made this assignment right here, both of those variables are now referencing the same object or array. Arrays are object in, objects in JavaScript. So they're referencing the same thing. Therefore, if I change one, it changes the other. So we're not truly copying this array. This is a, an issue that happens in functional programming frequently when we want to copy so that we don't mutate something. Well, the spread operator will allow us to make that copy. Now let's look what happens if I do the copy this way. I'm going to specify this as an array. And then inside of here, I'm going to use the spread operator to spread out that array. And so it has the individual elements. And so this will create a new array instead of referencing the same array. And we'll use the same console log statements, the push statement, to verify that that's working correctly. So let me save that. I jump out. Now we see that even though we changed ARR1, ARR2 still has the same numbers. And here's ARR1. And it has the 4 on it. So now we can see that those are two separate arrays. We have actually cloned that array the way we'd want to. Now, one final example that I want to do with the spread operator. And this example makes the spread operator confusing because it is actually doing just the opposite of what we've seen it do in these three examples we've taken a look at. Let me copy in a function here that will illustrate this. Now, with functions, we have the argument variable, which allows us to get all of the arguments that were passed into a function. Well, there are some issues with that. Um, and perhaps a better way to do that is with the spread operator in front of a variable, in this case, ARGS. Now, let's see what happens when we call this function. I'm going to call it with by passing in nothing to begin with. But then I'll call it passing in some arguments. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's see what we get. Refresh. Notice the first time that we call it, we get an empty array. The second time, we get an array with those arguments that were passed into it. So we can then work with those arguments. So if you are creating a function and there is a variable number of arguments that could be passed into that function and you need to work with those, well, you can use a spread operator to gather those in this case. Instead of expand, to gather them and then you can work with them. And so that application of spread looks quite different, it looks to be the opposite of the other applications. So don't let that confuse you when you see that type of application of the spread operator. In this case, it's not expanding it out, it's bringing them into an array. All right, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If so, hit the like. Also, hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. 
you can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and to support this channel. Thanks for watching.